Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Uh, so today we are actually going to talk a little bit in the detail about this new issue where YouTube is crippling even more of its creators. And and this is a thing like, th I'm not sure if this is going to impact me much. Um, I'm way over the thresholds they're, they're looking at and talking about in this. Uh, but the problem that I have is this really hurts the young and oncoming creators. And I, and I don't see this helping at one iota of any of the problems that we're, we're actually, uh, actually looking at. Um, so first, let's go ahead and walk over and then I'm going to give you the opinions that I have. So uh, first from the YouTube creators blog here. Um, so they're making the additional changes. Uh, these were announced, I think it's Wednesday now. So these were announced yesterday. And I actually first saw the information on this yesterday, but I just made the decision not to report about it in my uh, live show today. Um, uh, so I could actually read through uh, their posts and, and a few things. Um, so these are additional changes to the YouTube partnered program. Now, uh, from, from what it seems like is it just doesn't have as much to do with the Logan Paul issue as it does to do with with a few other issues but um, and some of this stuff I can see where they're coming from but I, I still don't think that this is a good solution I don't think this solves the biggest problems that we have um, but basically it says 2017 marked a tough year for many of you with several uh, several issues affecting your community and the revenue earned from advertising through your YouTube partner program YPP um, so the first and foremost thing is that people were making a lot of money on YouTube and it seemed to be okay until it was kind of made fragilely set apart when Wall Street Journal uh, came against PewDiePie and he did it not like they they did it simply because because they were envious of the fact that people were taking their advertiser dollars and putting them in places other than their site and you know to wall street journal what i had to say to you guys is don't put your stuff behind annoying pop-up ads and paywalls and all this other stuff and then wonder why your readership goes down and a lesson to you at new york times that you're thinking about doing the same thing it's going to hurt you bad um don't penalize someone for running an ad blocker when they run an ad blocker to prevent malicious ads and pop-ups all over the place. Okay, but what they did is PewDiePie is at times a controversial character and, uh, you know, a joking character. And I don't watch a lot of his videos. I've seen a few of them. I really can't stand watching them a whole lot, but that's okay. Um, I don't think his content necessarily is all that bad. But what they did is they found one video that they could take some things out of context and kept hitting, you know, refresh and refresh and refresh and refresh until eventually they found an ad on it and recorded it all uh, simply to raise some issues. That's what kicked off the first adpocalypse. Um, and let's see, what I forget what caused the second adpocalypse uh, at this point. It's just getting ridiculous. Um, and then, of course, the third one was the Elsa gate with all of these these little, um, you know, people watching, you know, doing these these channels with all of these characters. And, and here's the thing. Here's the problem is that these huge channels that were literally abusing children, in my opinion, they've raked in a lot, tons and tons probably hundreds of thousands of advertiser dollars and nobody made a stink about it until it became a public matter. But here's the thing. Well, YouTube stands out and says, you know, we can't possibly screen every video and they can't. It's impossible. It is impossible to screen every video. Um, but the fact of the matter is, can you screen, can you screen 5% of videos from the top 10% of creators? Yeah, not a problem. Uh, maybe even top 5% of creators. A lot of these channels, and I've watched some of these videos that qualified under these Elsa Gate channels. These are big channels. <laughs> these weren't small channels. These weren't a channel with 5,000 subs or 10,000 subs, the range I'm between. These are, these are large channels, some of them into the millions of subscribers. Don't sit there and tell me YouTube didn't know this was going on. They just didn't care because it was making them some money. The reality is if they were a little bit more proactive and they're like, hey, um, this top tier content pro provider is doing things that are very questionable and they had put an end to it, it actually would have 
probably not been quite as bad. In fact, a lot of the rest of us that actually have been choosing to play by the rules and producing genuinely family-friendly content would not have been nearly as impacted. So that's kind of the history. And of course it comes into, you know, 4.0 or whatever with this Logan Paul stuff. Um, so basically, uh, Susan mentioned in December, we're making changes to address the issues. Uh, and I'll say back, um, back in April, 2017, the first thing they did is they put 10,000 lifetime view requirements. And I've been watching that because I have three channels. I have the switch to Linux channel here where I talk about tech, Linux, privacy, uh, and this is kind of the place where my philosophy and other things I want to say go uh, because it's my biggest channel and you feed into your flagship channel. But I have a Christian channel because I realize that a lot of people on this don't really want to hear me talk about the Bible and stuff. And so I put that on a separate channel. And then I have another channel, what I'm very slowly building at this point in time, dedicated to cooking that I want to separate all those things out. Well, the next channel I really wanted to get growing is the Christian channel, and I got that thing up. I've been plugging away at that channel now for about three to six months, maybe three months. I think it's been closer to the three-month range, um, maybe three or four. And I've been doing a lot of good content over there as well, and, and good content. And, you know, I just crossed 100 subs over there. I just crossed 100 subs. And I've been counting up to that 10,000 because I I was pretty low. And then I did a video, um, um, my, my thoughts and memorial to R.C. Sprawl, who passed away in, in late December, uh, who I loved his work and uh, studied a lot of his work throughout my, my life. And uh, I've been growing that channel up and that had a big video and that caused a spur and, and growth. And then, you know, I did a few other videos and I, man, I got up to, I, that thing's almost up to like 3,000 or 4,000 lifetime views. I'm like, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now this comes out. And... Their new system comes out where you need 4,000 hours of watch time within the last 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. That Christian channel is not going to be anywhere profitable for a while, except that is actually the place where I can sell books and I promote uh, you know, some books and, and, and Amazon affiliate links. And being as that I use the same Amazon affiliate links for all my channels, it's, it's really hard to address where did, you know, where did what come from? <laughs> you know, it's, that's the thing that's harder for me to address. Um, uh, but that being said, um, now you need to have 4,000 hours. Now this is funny in the analytics, uh, dashboard of YouTube, we don't actually have the option to see hours unless it's in the new beta version, which I looked at once and couldn't stand it. Um, but we have watch time minutes, but what that boils down to is 240,000 minutes of watch time in a 24 hour period. Now my switch to Linux channel is well over a thousand subs and it is well over that. And in any given month, I'm up to, I think I'm up to about 500,000, uh, uh, 500,000 minutes so I'm, I'm over the 4,000 hours every single month. So like I said, this isn't going to impact me a whole lot, but I have a friend that this summer is going to be launching a YouTube channel and it's going to take him a year or two to get anything real close to profitability. Whereas not too long ago, it wasn't. And the reality is we are getting hit and we are being, we are playing by the rules. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and refresh the page right now over here. Because every video I've been doing for the last, um, since December 30th, every single video I posted has been demonetized. Um, all of them are in the clear now, except my video talking about the Logan Paul situation. That video is sitting at 644 views. It probably won't cross that thousand threshold and it's probably just going to stay in the demonetized state for a long time. Um, let's see what else I have right now. And some of these I haven't even challenged. Yeah, well, it actually looks like one, two, three, four, five. I only have six videos right now in this status. By the way, um, one of these was flagged a long time ago was manually reviewed and called correct and now it's sitting here at limited ads. Um, 
that one is called Lists and the Muslim Registry. And if you watch that video, it's called Lists and the Muslim Registry. It's my 10th tinfoil hat time video. That was a very good video. Talk about the dangers of lists. There's nothing objectionable about that video at all. Um, my search engine wars. Loading up search engines. Of course, it contains the word wars. Ooh, you know, <laughs> it's about search engines. Um, I went, looked up Google, looked up start page, looked up DuckDuckGo. What gives me the best results? Um, TransUnion mislabels people as terrorists. Of course, that one's sitting there demonetized. It has the word terrorist. Um, Kapoor uh, fentanyl and drug off labeling, which is a drug awareness video, effectively. Um, should we follow our dreams or be sheeple? I'm not sure why that one's demonetized. That's actually my tamest Tom on Fire video on the website. And then, of course, the Logan Paul one. So those are the ones sitting in my current system. Um, here's the biggest challenge I have is that none of these changes are going to solve the ultimate problem, the ultimate challenge right now. And the ultimate challenge right now is videos keep getting flagged for no good reason. And if, uh, if this latest video I had isn't demonetized by the end of the, the, end of the recording here, I'm going to be shocked. So anyway, as of today, um, which was yesterday, they are changing the eligibility requirements to 4,000 hours of watch time within the past 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. Now, here's the kicker. That, okay, now you're starting YouTube and you realize it. Here's the kicker. On February 20th, which is about a month from now, February 20th, 2018, they will be implementing the threshold across existing channels. Okay, so what that means is if you right now have a small growing channel and you are already monetized, ads are already being shown on your videos, you are accumulating things, and I know how exciting it is. It was only a year ago. In fact, a year ago, I don't think I had anything in my uh, in my system. Let me in fact pull up. I'm going to pull up my stats from last year at this time because I I crossed a hundred subs about a year ago. All right, so I'm going to come over here into this and I'm going to pull down my analytics. Let me do a custom range and I'm going to go January 1st, 17 to, it's, what is it, it's the 17th, when I'm recording this, I'm probably going to record the release as late, no wait, hold on, it's the 18th, oh yeah, 17th, okay, okay, so that week, one year ago, exactly one year ago, I made $1.22. It was, I think, the very first day I actually saw anything was I made $0.04 on January 1st, 2017. In fact, I'm going to back up my custom range just a little bit back. Let me go back. I'm going to go back to December 1st, 2016. I'm going to see if I had actually made anything. Oh, no. Actually, I had a $1.31 day back in the day. Yeah, so as the channel started to grow, this was before I crossed 100 subs. You know, I was making, you know, two, two cents, three cents. I got 24 cent day. That was so exciting. Back to three cents, 13 cents. I ramped up a little bit, 50 cent day. The first day I ever had over a dollar on YouTube was De uh, December 30th, 2016. I had a dollar and 31 cents that day. And when you are a young creator and you're just starting up and you're seeing for the very first time, oh, I got a dollar 30. And then, and it goes back down. The next day, your, your heart sinks a little bit as you're back down to four cents. And then it goes back up again. And for like a, 
a couple days in a row. It's getting, it's over 50 cents a day. And then whoo, I crossed a buck. January 16th, I crossed a buck. Well, I guess I crossed that buck earlier, but. Um, and then I'm sitting there for a couple days in a row, crossing a dollar. You're so excited. And it takes you a few months. What if you're that to that level? You're watching that. You're so exciting. You're sitting there at 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks in your account. And all of a sudden, retroactively, as of today, you will never see that again, at least for another year or two, as you have to accumulate a thousand subs and 4,000 hours of lifetime view. Because they're going to retroactively kick people out of the program. And that's a problem. That's a big problem because that just crushes the heart of somebody who's slowly watching that progress go. And this, I don't think, is going to stop a lot of abuse. I don't think it's going to stop a lot of the scammers that they want it to stop because those guys have a way around it. Those guys who've been timing the system and gaming the system and able to get that, that 10,000 lifetime views with bots, <laughs> you could still program a bot to the same thing. That's the problem. The people playing by the rules keep getting hurt. I don't think they should be kicking anybody out. I don't have a problem necessarily with them implementing the new strategy now, but I think anybody that was already receiving something should be grandfathered in. Unless they are demonstrated to be abusing the policies, the rules, or whatever. So it'd be a simple matter to figure out how many of these are being cut off and analyze those particular channels. I'd be okay with that too. And that could take a while, you know? But I think that this demoralizes the people on the lower end, but it's much like America today. The people at the bottom are just demoralized. Was it Carlin that said America's like a, a melting pot? The people at the bottom get burnt and the scum float up to the top? I don't know. They say these changes will affect a significant number of channels. 99% of those were making less than $100 per year in the last year, with 90% earning less than $2.50 in the last month. Any of these channels who no longer meet the threshold... Okay, now they did correct this. They will be paid what they've already earned based on the policies. That's good, and that's actually something I missed the first time over. And actually, Philip DeFranco did say that that, that was not there. So I'm not sure if this is a correction to the article, a clarification, or if both of us missed it. <laughs> um, but it does say here that they will be paid out what they have. So that's actually good, and I did not think that was the case. Uh, size alone is not enough to determine whether a channel is suitable for monetization, so we'll continue to use these signals like community strikes, spam, and other abuse flags to ensure we're protecting our creator communities from bad actors. It's just making it harder and harder and harder and making YouTube a less viable place to get a small business going in content creation. As I said, this isn't going to affect Switch to Linux very much. This is drastically going to damage my other two channels, however. Now, I'm not focusing and relying solely on this. I have Patreon. I'm working on my own support system that's not Patreon. I have Amazon affiliate links, and I write books, and I sell those. Um, and so those are those things that, that I'm doing. I think I'm going to look into t-shirt sales or things. I know a lot of people have asked about getting a nice shirt that says switch to Linux here and uh, I'll look into that. I'll look into that because enough people have asked me about it. Um, but I think that this demoralizes and it's still, they have still completely missed the mark. And I'm going to show you why. So if you go over to the uh, policies and safety, this is where you get some of the information about what is monetized, what is demonetized. And they give us very, uh, you know, very clear items. I don't see any, I don't think these are as ambiguous as some people are saying. I think the biggest ambiguous problem is that YouTube has been violating their advertiser friendly policies for a long time. And I would be in favor of them taking their, their current advertiser friendly policies, clarifying them and then sticking to those. So let's actually have a look at those advertiser friendly 
videos. So here is YouTube's channel on advertiser friendly content guides. YouTube is where the world chooses to watch a video. They make a big deal about here that you know you can do whatever you want, but it may or may not get ads on it. And I get that. That's cool. But here's here's the things that cause limited ads: controversial issues and sensitive events, drugs and dangerous products or substances, harmful or dangerous acts, harmful content, inappropriate language. Inappropriate use of family entertainment characters, uh, incendiary or demeaning, sexually suggestive content, and violence. Now with that being said, I'm going to go back to my video manager. I'm going to ignore the video I just live streamed because that has not, as of now, been flagged. It probably will be before long. Top five reasons for using Linux in 2018. That was flagged. Now it is clear now. The description reads, these are the top, the best reasons to consider looking at GNU Linux in 2018 for desktop computing. Security is better, options and workflow, software is better than ever, choices and appearance, free and open source software. And then I have my usual how to support the channel thing. My keywords are switch to Linux, technology, privacy, Linux, Apple, Microsoft, Linux security, Apple losing quality control, Linux workflow, and desktop environments, all of which were discussed in this video. That was demonetized. Apple is full of jerks and evil geniuses. Weekly News Roundup. The correction on Gecko Linux and an updated schedule was demonetized. A live look at Gecko Budgie was demonetized. My final thoughts on Elementary OS was demonetized. Uh, two of those are my videos for clients. Top five life skills everyone should know was demonetized. The Great Car Saga with TOS Today was demonetized. Processing all the processor news was demonetized. Picking an office suite for Linux was demonetized. What makes a great Linux distro? A live discussion was demonetized. Minjaro, Cinnamon, Quick Look was demonetized. Top five reasons elementary OS is not suitable for new Linux users was demonetized. And 2017 year in switch to Linux was demonetized. That is the problem YouTube needs to fix. Why are Linux videos with zero vulgarity, zero hate, zero news on the on wars and rumors of wars? Why? Are all of these videos constantly getting demonetized? Why is it that every single video I post has to be reviewed? Because it's destroying the revenue in this channel and making it not worth it as much. If there were a better viable option, yeah, I'd jump ship. You see, I think that this is very clear. I don't think that this is ambiguous at all. I think it's very clear. And I'm not doing a single one of these. Why is it that every video I'm doing is getting demonetized? Now here's best practices. Do be respectful of others, including your viewers and people or groups that you may feature in your video. Do use accurate thumbnails and metadata. Regardless of the content of the video, if the title or thumbnail does not comply with these guidelines, the video may not be suitable for advertising. And don't embed your own ads in your video since it violates our ad policies. Okay. You know, if you two could fix the problem of every one of my videos being demonetized, I'd say this is a fine change in their policy. But as of right now, they keep on making changes, but every single change hurts the smaller channels trying to play by the rules. That's what it does. 
And I get you need to have some level. And I'm okay with the level. But I don't think that you should just kick everyone off who doesn't meet your new fabricated timelines. And I think you really first need to address this issue as to why all these videos keep being demonetized. YouTube is crippling more of its people, and that's going to hurt the new enthusiasm for the young users coming on. It's going to make it so some people will have to work so hard and so long to get anything resembling progress out of this channel. And I think it might actually bolster things like Patreon and a few other systems like it that are doing a good job of helping to support creators um, outside. But those are kind of the things I want to talk about today. Yeah, YouTube is crippling more of its creators. I think it's, I think it's destructive. I think it will hurt the morale of the platform and it will help to only filter more ads to the same people that are making millions and millions of views. This isn't about protecting, you know, the brand as much as it is. Well, it's about protecting the brand, yes. But it's it's not about following these guidelines as much as it is avoiding the controversy. They're fine and, and okay running ads and paying out for ads on horrible channels as long as they just don't get caught. And that's the thing. They just need to stick to the policies that they have. And they need to fix this demonetization thing that keeps on hitting all of us in the Linux community. Because it doesn't make any sense. If you want to if you want to demonetize videos that say Linux, then fine. Have another line in there that says, well, you know, open source stuff is, is off the table for ads. You know? They need to fix that problem. They need to stop looking at who's getting into the ad problem and they, they need to fix the problem of these videos getting demonetized. And some of them I understand. Absolutely. I, I have no problem with the fact that they originally flagged racist, sexist, and biased big data, which was my tinfoil hat 49. I didn't really mind that they did that. Which, by the way, I challenged it and it's not demonetized anymore. I, I had no problem with that. But why in the world is 2017 year and switch to Linux? Why was that demonetized? It doesn't make any sense. YouTube, that's the problem you got to fix. You got to stop demoralizing, stop demoralizing your creators and start focusing on on the, those that actually matter. And it's the small upcoming guys that are being family friendly that are following your rules and your policies. You need to look at this that if a person, if a creator has 10 subsequent videos in a row that are all reviewed and all flagged, they should be put on a safe list. Tell those bots to stay out. Unless it hits some certain level of views. I mean, that's, that's a reasonable way around it. But to demonetize every video I do, that's not, you're, you're not solving your problems. I think that's what I want to say about this topic. So uh, thanks for watching. Once again, uh, if you would like to help support what we're doing so that I don't have to rely on YouTube and AdSense, switch to linux.com forward slash support has all of the current means you can, uh, you can help support the channel. So thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.